second and international network to our live coverage of the docking of Space Shuttle Atlantis to the Russian space station Mir. It is dark in space. Let me take you there and show you a live picture taken from the Mir space station of the cargo bay of Shuttle Atlantis. Well, that's not what it is. After all, it's changed in the past couple of seconds, but this is a uh, computer animation showing the shuttle. There's a picture of the shuttle uh, taken from Mir. You can see at the front of that picture, or actually about the middle of your screen right now, the shuttle's docking port with one of Mir's solar panels nearby. Jim Weatherby, the commander of the space shuttle, is at a window very close to that uh, shuttle docking port that's visible right now. He is in the final seconds of his most important piloting job to date. He's driving Shuttle Atlantis at about one inch a second toward the Mir space station. He's looking at a TV screen in the back of the flight deck, and if there's time, also looking out the windows near that docking port and into the Atlantis cargo bay. Mir is directly overhead, and there's a wide tubular docking adapter in the cargo bay. You can just on the left of your screen see that docking adapter. We have a model of um, Space Shuttle Atlantis provided to us by the Spacehab Corporation. And uh, on our model, we can also show you where that docking adapter is located. This is the big picture of the shuttle. Here's the docking adapter, and that's what we were just looking at on those live pictures from space. Let's go back to the live pictures again now. Um, the docking port will be driven in to the red docking adapter on the outside of the Mir space station, which you can't see in this live picture, but you'll probably be able to see it in a matter of seconds. If the docking is successful, and it appears it will be at this moment, the two ships will be touching in about a minute. Here's where the two ships are located over the Earth. We have a uh, computer-generated program provided to us by the analytical graphics company. Right up here at the top of Mir's orbit is where the two spaceships are. The reason these pictures that we're seeing from space are grainy at some points is because Russian ground stations are being used to transmit those to the ground. When we go back to those pictures, they should be getting a little better. Shuttle Commander Weatherby has his entire crew and the entire Mir crew helping him do this very tricky maneuver. The Mir crew sending directions over walkie-talkies to astronauts with identical radios in the shuttle. They're speaking Russian for the most part. Now, this is the... Um, uh, the tail of the shuttle, I believe. Yep, that's it. You're looking down the tail of the space shuttle. Now they've gone to a different view. That's a window on top of the space shuttle. Commander Weatherby is in that window. You can see a yellow, what appears to be an arrow point. Weatherby, is, his head is directly uh, in that window beneath that arrow point, and he is looking through that window up at the Mir space station. Joining us from Russian Mission Control is CNN's Jill Doherty. Jill, we can see the pictures, and from what we can hear, things are going well. What's it look like from the Russian side of the docking? Well, I'll tell you, here at Mission Control, uh, the room, every single eye is looking straight at a giant screen. Actually, there are two screens here where you can see what's happening, and they are glued to that screen watching, uh, making sure that everything goes okay. But actually, the, some of the officials down on the floor look very uh, at ease. They're walking around, and it uh, looks like everything is under control. It's a really important thing, obviously, this, this moment, uh, especially bringing up the computer that uh, they desperately need aboard Mir. But the mood's good. That's good, Jill. Right above your last name on the TV screen right now, you can see uh, Shuttle Commander Jim Weatherby's head, and uh, that's a good sign. He, uh, you can't see much of him there, but he is very, very meticulously um, uh, operating a control stick for the shuttle to make this, uh, uh, this docking in its final seconds. It's supposed to happen any second now. Why don't we listen in to the sounds from Mission Control in Moscow and from the space shuttle and just see if we can hear the docking as it occurs. Atlantis just five feet away. This is a live picture from the Mir space station. The voice you just heard is that of NASA commentator Rob Navius. Jill Doherty, uh, feel free to jump in and help us translate this Please Russian as it comes back and forth. Vehicles. This is a docking target uh, inside the docking tunnel on Mir. Contact and capture confirmed. Good news. 
The two ships have docked. Atlantis and Mir linked up once again. I got it, Houston. We copy and confirm. Jill Doherty, you and I have done these dockings in the past together. Uh, it's, um, uh, it was a, a normal post docking. Just a call. moment, we'll listen in here for a second. This particular docking made more intense uh, because the vehicles are in free drift to enable uh, the mechanical structuring, uh, the mechanical structure of the latches and hooks to begin engaging one another. At any rate, this docking was docking more tense for a lot of people because um, Mir's onboard computer had to be operating correctly for the docking to occur, and it has failed three times over the past three weeks. The, um, uh, one of the important things inside the space shuttle, of course, is the uh, replacement computer for Mir's main computer. Jill? You know, John, in fact, uh, there was a funny moment when we were talking to one of the NASA people. He was listening in, of course, on the conversations between the shuttle crew and the Mir crew, and he said that the shuttle crew at one point uh, was saying, uh, we'll be greeting each other, and in one hand, one hand will be shaking your hand, and in the other hand, we'll have a new computer for you. And that really is, they were waiting with bated breath for this computer. It's extremely important. In fact, uh, they were nervous. Even though they had fixed it on Monday, they were a bit nervous that even at the very last moment it might break down. Obviously it didn't, but there was that, uh, that concern that right to the last moment it might not work. And they actually had contingency plans in case it didn't. And John, uh, it, uh, when the actual uh, uh, link-up occurred, I was watching the officials here. They were uh, looking relieved, I'd say, but, but kept on doing what they had to do. Everybody else in the hall, and that includes, I would say, more officials than I have seen in a long time here at Mission Control. They all broke into applause and some cheers. But they're right now down on the floor, they're discussing, I guess, the next, the next move. They look happy, but it's the usual uh, full steam ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, for a minute there, Joe. We saw uh, what appeared to be a video graphic uh, giving the Russian mission controllers and the U.S.-Russian joint space program an attaboy. We saw a globe spinning with Mir and the shuttle on top of it. I guess that was a, a, a signal to the people in the room that everything had gone well in this docking. What is this picture, Jill? Do you know? I have, I've never seen anything like really? this. I have not. I really... I